Marine sealants are probably one of the most misunderstood materials your average boat owner is going to have to use. Welcome aboard. I'm Captain Wayne Canning and I'll be your host today on this Project Boat Zen video. The reason most marine sealants are misunderstood is because there's a lot of misinformation floating around on the web and on the docks about what type of marine sealant is best to use for what particular purpose. This is understandable because there's a lot of choice out there. Some people have had success with one particular type of marine sealant, so they feel that if it's worked for them in one application, it should work for all applications. Problem is, this really isn't true. Each type of marine sealant has its own characteristics and qualities that make it useful for one particular task or another. Some marine sealants should never be used below the waterline, while other marine sealants should never be used with plastics. It helps to understand exactly what types of marine sealants are available and what the properties of each of these marine sealants is. Back in the day, you didn't have a whole lot of choice when it came to marine sealants. There were just a couple of varieties available. But over the last 50 years or so, we've had a real revolution with marine sealants. A good part of this has been driven by the construction and aerospace industry. A good example of this is polysulfide sealants. Polysulfide sealants, which are widely used on boats now, were originally developed for patching bullet holes in World War II aircraft. The marine industry has benefited from these developments over the years, and now we have a wide selection of sealants available for us to use. It's important to understand the properties of each sealant in order to select the right sealant for the right task. In order to fully understand a sealant, you have to understand its physical properties. The first of these is its ability to stick to a substrate. What this means is basically its ability to stick to whatever you put it on. Not all sealants will stick to all materials. Next, you have to think about the actual physical properties of the sealant itself. Its tensile strength and its elongation ratio. Basically what this means is its ability to stretch as well as, as, as its ability to hold together when it is stretched. Some sealants break relatively easily, while other sealants are very tenacious and hard to pull apart. The next thing you need to think about is its ability to withstand environmental attacks. What this means is its ability to withstand weathering, UV, and chemicals. Chemicals can be anything from oil and grease to cleaning solvents you use to wash your boat. Understanding these characteristics in a sealant will help you select the right sealant for the right job. There really is no magic bullet when it comes to sealants. Some sealants will work very well for an application where another sealant in that same application would fail miserably. So it's important to understand your application before selecting the sealant. So let's take a look at the different sealants that are available and their characteristics. One of the most misunderstood sealants that boat owners encounter is silicone. Silicone has a bad rep for many reasons, but primarily because many people have used the wrong type of silicone in the wrong application. There's many different types of silicone available, and the cheap stuff you get from the hardware store is not what you want to use on your boat. Silicones use different chemicals as their cure agents, and these different cure agents result in different physical properties of the material. The cheap type of silicone is referred to as acidic cure. It has that sour vinegar smell to it. You never want to use this on your boat. This is a cheap type material that's primarily designed for indoor, home, bathroom, and kitchen use. The better quality silicones are alcohol or water cure, and these will not have that strong vinegar odor to them. These silicones cost more, but they're worth the extra money. The primary characteristics of silicone sealant is it's a relatively flexible material, it sticks very well to smooth surfaces, and it resists UV and weathering very well. It's also good at resisting chemical attack, both from oil and cleaning solvents. Silicone's weakness is it's not very strong. You can pull it apart relatively easily. It's also not possible to paint over silicone. The paint will just bead up on it. 
So for this reason, you don't want to use it near any painted surfaces. There are some people who claim that you can never clean up the surface after you've used silicone, but this is simply not true. The reason this myth exists is because it is difficult to clean the film of any sealant. The problem is it shows up more with silicone because you can't paint over it, whereas you can paint over other sealants. Therefore, it becomes more obvious. But as with any sealant, it is possible to clean the surface with a little bit of effort. A good quality silicone is one of the few sealants that will stick well to plastics. The reason this is, is plastics, being a petroleum product, leach oil from their surface. This is particularly true with new plastics. Most sealants will not stick to plastics for this reason, but silicone is one of the few exceptions. Most manufacturers of plastic port lights recommend that you use silicone, and you should only use silicone when sealing Lexan or plexiglass hatch lenses. The real key to success with silicone is to buy a good quality product from a name brand manufacturer. One of the best silicone sealants is Dow 795. Boat Life and 3M also make very good quality marine grade sealants. One reason you want to use a marine grade silicone is because it resists mold and mildew. So silicone makes a good choice for bedding plastic fittings as well as plastic windows and hatch lenses. Another widely misunderstood sealant are the polyurethanes, more commonly known under the brand name of 3M 5200. Polyurethanes are an extremely aggressive adhesive and a very strong sealant. It's very difficult to pull something apart that's been put together with 5200. You would think this would make it a good sealant, but it has other weaknesses that make it a poor choice for a lot of sealing applications. Some of the weaknesses of the polyurethanes are they have a poor resistance to chemical attack, and this includes oils and detergents often found on boats. Particularly teak oil and diesel oil will affect polyurethanes. Also, polyurethanes don't have a great resistance to just general weathering and UV attack. They tend to get chalky on the surface and start to crack open. Once they crack open, water will start to get inside, and it'll kind of work a little channel in where it'll start to leak. Then you have the problem of removing the fitting so that you can reseal it, but the 5200 holds tenaciously, so it can be very difficult to take something apart once put together. Polyurethanes are generally better used as an adhesive or below decks where they won't be subject to environmental attacks. They also work fairly well for underwater fittings. A relatively newcomer to the sealant market are the hybrid sealants. Hybrid sealants are a combination of two other types of sealant. The advantage to the hybrid sealants is they take the best characteristics of two different types of sealants. In the case of Boat Life's Life Seal, it's a combination between silicone and polyurethane. So it has the weathering resistance of silicone with the strength of polyurethane. You still can't paint over the life seal, but it does work well with plastic. 3M4000 UV is a newer type polyether sealant. These sealants are relatively new and they do promise some interesting characteristics. They have good weathering resistance and they're a medium strength material that will bond well to many substrates. These new sealants are offering some real promise, although time will tell how well they hold up. Recently, there's been a renewed interest in butyl tape as a sealant. Butyl tape has its places, but like silicone, it comes in a lot of different formulations. Not all butyl tapes are equal, and it's very difficult to tell if you're getting the good stuff versus the bad stuff. Butyl tapes were popular with boat builders back in the 60s, but fell out of favor because of failure rates. Butyl sealants usually come in a tape format that you roll out and you can place the material down where needed, unlike a caulk material that you squeeze out of a tube. One of the drawbacks to butyl sealants is they never harden. They always stay soft and sticky. This could be good in some applications, but in other applications this really isn't a desirable characteristic. The other problem with butyl sealants is they have a very low resistance to chemical attack, particularly petroleum chemicals. So once again, you don't want to use them around any teak oil or any place you may think you spill diesel fuel. The fact that they don't harden can be a benefit in some applications and it can be a deterrent in other applications. Butyl sealants don't resist heat very well either. 
they tend to melt and ooze out of metal fittings that get heated in sunlight. Butyl sealant can be a good choice for things like bedding chain plates that go through the deck. This is because the fact that it does stay flexible means that as the chain plate moves around as the boat's being worked, the sealant will follow it. It's also very good at gap filling. As you can see, there's many types of sealants available, and selecting the right sealant for the right job will ensure that your project comes out well and you won't have any leak issues in the future. Always check manufacturer labeling and follow manufacturing instructions. In our next video, we'll take a closer look at how to apply sealants for success. We'll look at how to prepare surfaces and how to tape off and how to actually apply the sealants for the best results. Until next time, I'm Captain Wayne, wishing you fair winds and following seats.